Here and now, here we are. The war continues, and so do we. Well, I found an article that was uh, very revealing. Mm -hmm. And I can show this uh, to you right away. Okay. Here. This is from the Electronic Intifada. Yes. Israel admits to burning hundreds of people on the 7th of October. <laughs> yeah, the Red Regev, you know, who was doing yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he, he just casually, you know, like just throws out, oh, yeah, well, we reduce the number of total Israeli uh, casualties on October the 7th from 1,400 to 1,200. 200 difference. Big difference. What's the yeah. difference? Well, he, he admitted it. He admitted it was uh, those Hamas fighters. So the question is, who who killed them and burned them alive like this? Oh, who? it's Hamas. Hamas's fault, you know. It's, oh, Hamas okay. burned them, you know. Yeah. So For it's sure. Hamas. They burned themselves yeah. among with the with the, uh, the rest of the uh, settlers who were also burned. Yeah. How yeah. convenient! How convenient! Four or five hundred Israeli burned. Yeah. Okay. Five hundred people. I'm oh, sorry. Burned. Then uh, decided, oh no, uh, there's only two, uh, 300 of them were Israelis, the other were Hamas fighters. Yes. How that come? How that come to be? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's it's do some, very... some accounting here, okay? So it started off at uh, 1,400. Now it's uh, less 200, because that's yes. you know, uh, just Palestinians, supposedly. Okay, yeah. so now we're down to 1,200. But, you know, like I read that of those, 300 were soldiers, Israeli soldiers. Okay. Yes. No, actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, they say 1,400, you know, civilians. They always say civilian, civilians. Okay. Yeah. So now we're down to uh, uh, 900. Ah, 900. Okay. Now, uh, of the 900 civilians who died, how many were killed by Israel and how many were killed by Hamas? Now. Oh, let, let's just for not ah. to forget that uh, they, they were mowing, they are mowing those people who were flooding the rave party by helicopters those were not burnt they were being killed by helicopter submachine guns yes they targeted about you know, by hellfire missiles yeah yeah there's none not, not those ones there was being mowed by machine guns so it's oh, about 300 machine gun fire as well okay. yeah so uh, there's another so is this 600 there's others being destroyed or killed by uh, uh, Tanks and hellfires in their homes along the captors. Okay, not so fast, not so fast. You know, we don't want to yeah. confuse people. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. At the rave party, they said there was 263 burnt bodies. Okay, so obviously yeah. they were, I saw the videos myself, you know, like that the yeah. military released showing how they targeted cars and people, you know, running away and all this sort of thing, you know. Okay, so 263 for sure were killed by helicopters you know so mm -hmm. okay now we're down to 637 okay yes now in the kibbutzim you know uh they... oh wait wait they admitted they admitted that over 300 soldiers were killed on october 7th the israelis yes okay. so you have to add those i i deducted them already the, that was the first deduct deduction from the 1,200. No, those being burnt. But There's... the 300 soldiers, uh, of the 1,200, uh, 300 were soldiers who were okay. killed. Okay. Okay. So that's, okay, so now we're down to 637, but we don't know of the 637, how many were hostages who were killed by the Zionist military as well. So... Yes, you know, like tank. yeah, tank fire, helicopter fire, because you know we know the strategic objective of Hamas fighters was to go in there and take hostages. So they can get the release of the Palestinian hostages that were being held by exactly. Israel in its prisons, right? Okay, but yeah. there were other people who came across the border who were either you know curious or who came to uh, loot or who came to kill. <laughs> you know, like this one guy, you know, who's voice was taped, you know, that the Israel ambassador broadcast at the United Nations, you know, this one young guy, you know, was very mm -hmm. killing 10 Israelis, whatever, you know, like yeah. maybe it wasn't even him, you know, who, who, who killed them, you know, like, but, you know, a lot of the, uh, the uh, squatters or settlers, you know, in the kibbutzim around, you know, Gaza, 
you know, had guns and they were soldiers, reserve army soldiers, and they were, you know, shooting at the Hamas fighters. So, you know, they got killed and some Hamas fighters got killed, you know, because of their fire. So, <clears throat> so, you know, it's indeterminate, you know, like of the 637, you know, how much, how many of them uh, were killed by uh, Hamas fighters in exchanges? How many were killed by um, individuals, you know, who are not Hamas fighters who came over, you know, to seek revenge? Uh -huh. they, uh, you know, were killed, you know, because of uh, of the uh, tank fire. So it's it's very difficult, you know, like 637. Okay, let's say 50-50, you know. So now we're down to about 300. Israeli civilians. Yeah, uh, and you have to you have to realize that many who were killed in the kibbutzim, they were also soldiers, or you know, uh, in their homes. Yeah, they, yeah, they've been killed. They've been targeted by Hamas fighters, and rightly so. Even if they're not holding guns. Yeah, it's war. You know, it's war. You know, a, you know, this is this is you know not. You know, this is this is part of war that Israel been waging on the Palestinians since 1947. Actually, before that, way before that. But let's start. Yes, let's start from 1947-48 war, ethnic ethnic cleansing war, yeah. ongoing. Israel had murdered and killed intentionally tens of thousands of Palestinians, many of them women, children, elderly, in their own homes, doing nothing. Just walk in and kill them, or walking, or doing, uh, cultivating their uh, olive groves, uh, groves, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is part of fighting. This is part of war. That what Hamas did on IT in uh, October seventh. I don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not here to condone or to condemn. I'm just trying to explain to the people that what Israel trying to put the image of poor helpless civilians being killed in their own homes that's not true mm -hmm. many of them were soldiers many being murdered by the israelis themselves and many of the age of fighters and we know israel is an army has a state it's not the other way around mm -hmm. so everybody knows that an israel an israeli adult is a uh, a soldier, and he's a reserve soldier for the rest of his life at the age of 50, I think, 55, something like that. 45, so, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there's no apologies to make, uh, to be make, made, and uh, there's no condemnation whatsoever. Uh, if the Israelis were not uh, the occupy, occupy, uh, occupation force, none of that ha would happen. None of that would happen. Mm. So stop crying the crocodile tears, mm. Israelis. Yeah. And before the Zionists yep. were uh, attacking That's, the Palestinians, uh, it was the British who were attacking the Palestinians. Uh, are you there? Uh, yeah, the image was frozen there. Yeah, we had a... Yeah, sleep. no worries. It's okay. Yeah, it's, that's good. Yeah, so I was saying that the, uh, you know, even before the Zionists, you know, the Palestinians were being attacked by the British in the British occupation. Both British and Zionist uh, gangs. Yeah, British they were and together. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. they're together. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I mean, there's like we we take the Tantura uh, massacre, mm -hmm. which is uh, broadcasted on Israeli TV by the the fighters themselves or the terrorists themselves, who were proudly gloating about how they killed and massacred civilians uh, and unarmed uh, civilians, untrained civilians to even know how to use arms. Mm -hmm. They killed them in cold blood. Yeah. I saw video so, uh, interviews with them. One guy was so proud that they had a flamethrower and they could burn up, you know, people without any risk to themselves. He actually was laughing while he was yep. explaining this. Yeah. They, like even after all these years, after 75 years, no regret whatsoever to mm -hmm. what they did. Nothing. They said, oh, it's one of them. They said, it must be done to create a state. It mm -hmm. just, it, it, he just telling us without uh, any doubt that we created our state by terror, mm. by using terror against the people of Palestine. Mm. That, uh, go ahead. 
I've seen a few, you know, interviews uh, with uh, those participants who regretted their participation, but uh, they were the, the the lesser number, of course. And, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. this idea of the state, you know, it's incredible, you know, like this concept of the state, the nation state, which comes from Europe. It's not even part of Judaism, you know, like it's Protestantism that was first, you know, like, it, you know, it blew up, you know, in the Reformation, you know, when all the the uh, states in Europe uh, wanted to be independent. And this is, you know, how they conceived independence as a nation state for their own nation. And uh, they defined their nationalism in their one sort of cultural and homogeneous identity. And, uh, you know, everybody else had to conform and assimilate, otherwise they would be killed. And even after they assimilated, they got killed anyway, you know, like the Jewish people and the Roma people. So it's the nation state concept that comes from Europe. Originally, you know, by the uh, German, uh, the Prussian, uh, you know, political theorist, you know, Hegel, who presented the idea, you know, as a form of uh, uh, democratic uh, nationalism, you know, that the nation, you know, would govern itself. And then they would define the nation according to the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and they called it democracy. You know, this is, you know, how democracy started, it, you know, as a perverted form of uh, nationalism. Yes. Yeah. Let's go back to the... the... The Zionist terror campaign, I, I call it Zionist terror campaign of genocide. Mm -hmm. It's not a war. This is not a war. A war, usually, you have two army, two armies facing each other in a symmetrical war. But this is an asymmetrical uh, attack on civ civilians by the Zionists, whereas there's some form of resistance by the Palestinians mm -hmm. in form of different uh, militia groups like Hamas, Jihad, P Popular Front, and others. So, uh, so far as of this more as of this morning, the to death toll is over twelve thousand, over thirty thousand injured, almost half of the Gaza Strip uh, infrastructure, homes, etc., is being reduced to rubble. Um, so that's it's, only it's that's a, only the known deaths, exactly that's the, the minimum. Then there's the yes. deaths that are that have not been found underneath the rubble yet. Definitely, there's a few thousand more still under the rubble. That's very sad. While well, the world is watching hmm. what's going on and just uh, giving us uh, lip service, uh, like <laughs> I never heard in my life. You know, when when there's such, let's say, let's call it a war, a war, okay? I never heard anybody calling for pause of war. <laughs> like, pause. Like, all the Western leaders, instead, before they, uh, oh, we are for Israel, go ahead, kill and maim and injure and destroy. We're behind you under the banner of Israel has a right to defend itself. Whereas that when the pressure is mounting within these countries, now they are using public relation lip service mm. to their people. Oh, we, you know, we ask, we call on Israel to exert maximum uh, restraint mm. from hurting women and children, you know, civilians. Mm. And we call on Israel to pause for a humanitarian mm. corridor. Mm. Of course, this is, has been happening for a week now. Nothing happened. Mm. Just yesterday, like within the past 24 hours, the one of the highest toll uh, being murdered by the Israelis of about 1,000 Palestinians within 24 hours wow. in Gaza. Yes. Mm. That's thanks to the, the calls by the West, including uh, the Zionist Lincoln. Mm. and Zionist uh, Biden and Zionist uh, Justin Trudeau. Mm. And of course... Trudeau is uh, calling for, for something or other now. Trudeau, Trudeau has changed his position because he lost the Jewish vote already because of the Nazi gate. So now he's appealing to the Muslims. <laughs> it's not going to work. No. It's, it's way too little, way too late, and way too short. He, mm. hasn't, called, he hasn't called for ceasefire. He mm. calling for pauses. Him and Madame Julie, mm. his foreign minister, that uh, empty head person. Mm. Uh, yet he has to justify these calls by reiterating 
the Western mantra of the Zionist uh, public relation uh, campaign, Israel has to be destroyed. I mean, sorry, Hamas has to be destroyed. Israel has the right to defend itself, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just, uh, he, I, I can tell you, as an Arab Muslim living here in Canada, from talking to many people in different groups and uh, uh, the liberal will get zero vote, zero vote from the Muslim and Arab community. Uh -huh. Very interesting. So this is going to be a, um, a minority government uh, the, uh, after the next election because the NDP is going to uh, step up. So there'll be oh, the NDP, parties dividing yeah, the vote. I, I have to, I have to add, I, ha I have to say that the NDP... Uh, um, had a, a good stand uh, versus what's going on. They mm. called for ceasefire. Mm. They condemned Israel's slaughter of, of civilians. Mm. And I guess most of the votes of the Muslim and Arabs would go to the NDP. Yeah, not necessarily going to the not necessarily going to the other fascist group, which called to the conservatives. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, what do we know of the uh, losses? Uh... Uh, on the part of the Zionist military occupation. Uh, about a week ago, I heard that it was about 130 tanks or was it armored vehicles, you know, that were uh, destroyed um, even though they had uh, 950 tanks that were entering into the Gaza. Uh, have you heard anything more? Yes. Uh, as of yesterday, I heard Abu Obeida, the military spokesperson of Hamas, the, the total Israeli vehicles, mixed vehicles, tanks, bulldozers, APCs, jeeps, etc. It's over 200, either de totally destroyed or partially destroyed. Mm. There's uh, many Israeli special forces, infantry forces being uh, cornered and trapped, and the 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 positions they were in, they have been booby trapped and blown up. Yet the Zionists, they have been giving us one death every two days. Oh. Like their total death, I think is, stands at fifty three Israeli uh, military, which is the number is go beyond that. Maybe I would I would say. Being conservative here, maybe four folds, four folds, maybe two hundred plus, mm -hmm. yeah, plus, yeah. plus maybe hundreds others injured, many uh, in in serious uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. It's a very close uh, quarter, uh, you know, fighting, uh, and I like from the footage I've seen that Ham Hamas or Al Qassam released, like. They 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 killing the Zionist uh, like in in droves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not definitely it's not fifty three uh, dead uh, Israeli soldiers. It's mm -hmm. way more than that. But they they cannot release the numbers for fear of reaction within the Zionist society or community because they're very sensitive that of the death uh, toll. Mm -hmm. If they tell them the real death toll. Mm. It'll be uproar within the Zionist uh, entity. Yes. We'll start calling for the withdrawal of their boys and girls, or boys actually, from the you know war front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yes. Uh, they seem to be panicking as well because they've called up three hundred thousand reservist soldiers. Yes, they did, but you know what? The, the the word going around within the Zionist entity that only 20% of those reservists replied that 80% they don't want to go to war. So they actually <laughs> that's a good number. Get, yeah, they get maybe 60, 70,000. That's it. Who are actually who is really fighting now in Gaza is the actual uh, career army. Mm. It's it's the 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 core mm -hmm. army is not the reservists. Yeah. Whereas the other reservists, they give them other jobs to like to uh, to uh, terrorize the Palestinians at the West Bank, killing uh, workers, killing uh, uh, grove uh, olive grove pickers, etc. Defending et the settlers. Yeah. 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 Uh, or or 
defending the settlers, although with the settlers, when the settlers goes into the Palestinian towns or uh, villages to commit pogroms yeah. uh, against uh, uh, against uh, the Palestinians, um, that's what they, they do. And if anybody stand up to the Zionists, they shoot them. Yeah. You know, when I heard the figure of 300,000, you know, being mobilized, I thought that they all would, you know, have to respond, you know, like it was compulsory, but it's not necessarily yeah. compulsory, huh? Well, it is compulsory, but they cannot they cannot arrest 200,000, put them in jail. Oh, I get it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, you know, some, some of them ran away to Europe or United States. Others, they just stayed put where they're at their homes. Uh -huh. And uh, the army cannot mobilize uh, military police to go arrest those all these people. It it will be huge undertaking to to uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So maybe maybe sixty or seventy thousand uh, accepted the the call and went to their units, uh -huh. but the rest did not. Uh -huh. Well, I was concerned when I heard the number three hundred thousand. You know, because I thought that that's a uh, such a number of soldiers would be so much of an exaggeration to go and you know like fight in gaza you know like it just w wouldn't make any s military sense you know so i thought that the actually you know the military logic involved you know with mobilizing so many soldiers would be to go and um, move in on the west bank and to move in the already... northern sector you know into janine nablus you know yeah and yeah. Where the militants are and to um, carry out a sweep there and do another, you know, mowing of the lawn there, you know, and give it the Gaza treatment. And, well, and, uh, they are doing it. They did it yesterday in Balata Rvigi camp. Yesterday. Oh, yeah? What oh, happened? yeah. They, they were four uh, freedom fighters uh, in, a, in, a, in a home, in a house, uh -huh. in the Rvigi camp of Balata near Nablus. And uh, and a drone uh, uh, fired the hellfire onto the house, killing four of them. Mm -hmm. Destroyed the the uh, the place they were hiding in. Wow. Yeah. So uh, and they killed another person, another young man in uh, Tubas, just north of Nablus, northeast of Nablus. Uh -huh. And, and it, it just the murder goes on and on and on and on. They just. Uh, insisting to bring uh, more, uh, you know, uh, mayhem and terror to the Palestinians. Mm, yeah, I know Balata Camp very well. I was there in 2003, yeah. and uh, I was just watching a video that I'd made from Balata Camp of another military incursion in 2011. Last yeah. evening, I was watching my video. I have a lot of videos on the, my YouTube channel <clears throat> yeah. of Abraham Weisfeld, you know, documentary yeah. evidence of what this Zionist military mm -hmm. has been doing all along. And uh, this, of course, is Sector A, which they're supposed to be, you know, like banned from, you know, like what are they doing in Sector A? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a mirage. That's a make believe. Uh, Israel never abided with any uh, agreement, whether it's, it's within region or international. Mm. Nothing, nothing. There's over 1000 agreements and resolution that Israel has to abide with them. None of them, none of them Israel abided with them. Mm. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm. You know, by the way, you know, the, the I will go back to the uh, October 7th. Uh, like many uh, international law experts says all these, uh, just could you hold a second? Uh, just hold a second. Sure. Okay. Hello? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Somebody trying to call me. Um, uh, all the areas that uh, Al Qassam uh, um, attacked on October seventh, it's areas that were slated to the Palestinian or the Arab state of nineteen forty seven partition plan. Mm -hmm. So basically, these people or Al Qassam, when they attack, they attack to liberate their own land. It's a Palestinian land. Is According to United Nations Resolution yeah. 181, yeah. which is uh, give us the, that piece of land. Mm. So therefore, even if they if they if they killed so-called uh, civilians, they are colonial settlers, mm. and under international law, they have the right to fight them and and even murder them and kill them. 
I, again, I'm not, mm. uh, uh, you know, condoning or uh, condemning. I'm just saying, stating the obvious. That's that's that, that's a legal opinion. You know, that's a legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm the not, law. My, my you know, opinion, that, uh, that's a legal opinion. Exactly. And these so are uh, colonists, you know, who are armed as well. Absolutely, they're all armed. Yes, of course. So that's debunked uh, the Zionist uh, story. Besides the numbers, they it's all it's a hollow, like a switch cheese. Their argument yes. about that. So the point it's is that there is the, the yeah. point is that this is a, a a a struggle, a battle of liberation. This is not a campaign, uh, you know, of extermination of Jewish people no, as claimed no, 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 by no. the government of of the Zionist state. You know, they're using Absolutely the Jewish not. people, they're using the Holocaust to justify another Holocaust. This is what Absolutely. they're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like in, in Palestine, and I, I remember my father who was, you know, was born, my, my late father was born in 1900. And he was telling me about uh, uh, Palestinian Jews. They were just just an, uh, another Palestinian. They never looked at them as, you know, what their religion is, Jews or Christian or Muslim. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, this is Haim or uh, David or what. Well, they, they would not even call them David, Dawood. In Arabic, mm. so uh, they not, never had a problem at all with mm. with the Palestinian Jews. They were uh, part of a vibrant uh, social fabric of Palestinians who was made of Muslims, Christians, Jews, and Druze. Mm -hmm. Coming the uh, Zionist Ashkenazi from Europe, yeah, the whole the whole thing turned upside down and becoming yeah. you know. You know, uh, you know, making Jews uh, the enemy of the Palestinians. Yeah, no, the Zionists were so that. assimilated, you know, to uh, to European, you know, uh, political culture that they became colonialists themselves. That this was their solution to the oppression of the Jewish people in Europe. Europe, yeah. in effect, is is the one who pushed the Jews into the sea. Yes. <laughs> went to Palestine. You know, they're the ones who pushed the Jews into the sea. You know, not the Palestinians. The Palestinians had always lived together with Jewish Palestinians. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Palestinian Jews, Palestinian Jews lived peacefully and cooperatively uh, within the rest of the Palestinian fabric. I yes. want not, you know, so uh, many, many, uh, there were actually some intermarriages. Mm. Within uh, within the pa Palestinian uh, society, Jews married to Christian, Christian married to Muslims, Muslim married to Jews, etc. You name it. It was mm. just just a, 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 actually a progressive uh, uh, social uh, order, even in the early twenties, even when the British came in. But when the Zionists coming in big droves and starting changing the landscape. And sadly, some of of those Jews who were being sucked into the Zionist movement, so that it, then when things start to turn to the worst, sadly. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, the initial Jewish refugees who went to Palestine, they weren't necessarily Zionists. They just couldn't get a visa to go into any other country. And Europe wasn't going to give them a chunk of territory to set up a Jewish uh, province or anything like that. No way. So they ended up, you know, getting swept up, you know, by the Zionists, you know, who had the resources and the boats, you know, to take them out of yep. uh, Europe, you know, because a lot of Jewish people, you know, they tried to go back, you know, to where they were living before, like into Poland, you know, and then they would get massacred even after the war was over, you know, in Poland, so, you know, they, because of both, you know, the church and, you know, the Communist Party, you know, cadre, you know, who were anti-Semitic, you know, because everybody went into the Communist Party because it was opportunistic to do so. So, you know, like they got it from all sides, you know, so they gave up, you know, on going back to Poland. And even then, you know, like it was so difficult, you know, I myself applied, you know, to have my Polish citizenship recognized, you know, since my parents were Polish. And they refused, you know, this previous government had refused to recognize, you know, my citizenship. And they give me all sorts of reasons, you know, and I said, you know, like the reasons you're giving are the Nuremberg laws of 1934, you know, put into effect by the Nazis, you know, saying that just because you're born in Poland doesn't mean you're a citizen. You have to have something else that makes you a citizen. And what that is, is a, is a baptismal certificate from the church, probably, you know, <laughs> so their definition of national identity, you know, becomes, you know, fascist again, 
Now they had an election. Oh, Who's or, or the if government you have, is now? If you, have, if you have recommendation letter from the Zionist movement, you probably become a Polish all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that's another route. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's another route. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you but know, I did mention that I was, we were a Jewish Bundist family, you know, so maybe, maybe that was, you know, maybe they didn't want to see any more Bundists. They tried to get they rid don't of want, the Bundists, yeah. you know, the whole Jewish working class, you know, in Europe was destroyed. You see, the, 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 Polish, the Polish government, the Polish governments actually, actually after the collapse of the Berlin War, they're actually more right wing and anti-Jewish than uh, the ones before and if they can prevent a, a Jew to come back becoming a Polish citizen, they will stop him. They can't stop a Zionist, but they could stun they could stop A. B. Weisfield. Yeah. Because A. B. Weisfield yeah, is not a Zionist. Yeah. yeah you know, there's a, a, something else that I wanted to point out to you. Um, you know, like the media, you know, the, the Western, you know, basically, you know, like the media is, you know, like Half, you know, like a Zionist Jewish, you know, bourgeoisie and half, you know, Christian, uh, uh, Christian uh, Zionist, you know, but the Christian Zionists, you know, they present this as a struggle between, you know, their good side, you know, the Christian side and the bad Muslim side. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah of course. Yeah. What about, you know, the Palestinian Christians? They just bombed the oldest uh, Christian church, you know, like in Palestine. Yeah. So they I don't can't... really care about Christians, they don't it care. Seem. No, no. It's not Christians, you know, that they're trying to save, you know, or promote or, or uphold, you know, the values of. Their Christian values means nothing. Who they are attacking are the Oriental peoples. Exactly. This is what actually happened in the, in the Crusades. During the Crusades, when the Crusades advanced toward uh, Palestine or southern Syria at that part, at that time, they massacred many impure Christians. Uh -huh. They are impure Christians because they are, they are, they're not white. They're non-white. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yeah, this I know. They, and they killed the Jews. History. They killed it to Jewish, you know, like Palestinians yeah. as well, you know, because they killed they the they same killed you know, to the Crusaders and they didn't care. They were just, you know, all Oriental yeah. peoples and they were coming yes. to set up a colony yeah. these for the are, West, you know. These, so that was yeah. it. These are uh, non-white, impure, heretic, so-called Christians. We have to get rid of them. Jews and Muslims, are, of course, they are the enemy. Uh, we, you know, that's what they did. Yeah. So, for so in the in the in the mind in the deep mind of the collective West, even the Christian Arabs are not Christian. They are something else. They look they look like us. I mean, Christian like us, but they're not. They're not us. They're mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. So, especially especially the the Orthodox Christians. Yeah. They don't consider them, you know, and they are the majority of Christians in in the in the Levant. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to conclude that this is a uh, a racist, colonialist, white supremacist mentality that is supporting Zionism, and that's what Zionism is basically. That's where it comes from, and that's what it's all about. And now it's demonstrating to everybody, you know, concerned, you know, just what it is really. You know, this is the essence of Zionism. This is not an aberration. Yeah. This is the true Zionism that's coming out now. Zionism, I, I always say, Zionism is the ninth crusade wave mm. to Palestine. Mm. The, the eighth was finished, I think, around uh, the 11th or 12th century. Mm. On the 20th century came the ninth uh, uh, crusade wave to Palestine. Mm. This time, instead of using uh, to liberate uh, Jesus' uh, tomb, is to get the Jews back to to Palestine, mm. and uh, but in essence, in essence, they are the same. It's a Western colonized colonization of the Levant. Mm. Okay, just to conclude here, we don't have much time. You know, like our own uh, uh, transmission on my channel alone, you know, is only getting a certain minimal number of people who know about it. You know, like. Uh, 50 to 100, 150 or so, but is included in documentary made by Comrade Net in Phoenix. And on the Bundes Movement channel, it got mm -hmm. 1,200 views the last I looked, you know, so. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, this that's is, it. you know, great that people are being able to hear, you know, what they Wonderful. hear without censorship.
Very good. Wonderful. Okay. Speak to you soon.